Hey guys, this is Ron from Speaker of the Stars and welcome back to, ch to my channel. I flubbed up my intro. Amazing! So this was supposed to be the last video for 2018 because it's supposed to be the December video but because if you've been following my channel but because I have been in a bit of an art block during September and October and I didn't do any videos for then. My November video was released in December and this was released now, sadly, January 2019. I'm a month late. Amazing. <sighs> anyway, I still wanted to end the Flora series somehow. So I will be doing Poinsettia, which is what you're watching right now. And after this, I'll still be doing a sort of overview of all of the, the cards or the art. Just to see like the evolution over time or you know it's it's nice to see the entire set done so the poinsettia was supposed to represent good cheer success sweetness self-esteem and vanity but i didn't really go with any of those themes because i knew what i wanted to do i wanted to do a cozy looking piece so what you're seeing right now is me doing the thumbnailing first i did the flower itself even though i'm fairly familiar with the poinsettia because um it's the most common christmas decoration you see around here like you you would think that or i believe that all christmas trees at one point has a poinsettia in them because it's the most common flower it's a flower of choice for december and my mom has a bunch of them because well she loves decorating stuff and it's fake it's the fake flowers made of plastic but she has so much of them that she accumulated over the years and I see them every year so I kind of know how the poinsettia looks like but I drew the flower anyway because I needed to properly see how the real one looks like and how it would interact with um, other flowers and all of that so I drew that and then I did some thumbnailing which is one thumbnail because I knew what I wanted, wanted to do and I'm fairly loyal to my thumbnails, somewhat. Uh, for poinsettia, I do I did add this little bell thing decoration at the top left, just to add in a bit more detail towards the piece. And that's the kind of edits I make to my thumbnails. Other than that, they're pretty um, loyal to the thumbnail. That's why I kind of that's why I kind of cut out the sketching portion because we'll go over it we'll go over it again in the lining portion anyway. So yeah. So so the reason I wanted I wanted to do a cozy piece for December or Pesacha was because um usually it's already well known that December is a really cold season, especially in the Europe and US it snows over there. In Japan it snows over there. Here in Southeast Asia we just you know, get a little cold. Sometimes there's rain and stuff like that. But it's supposed to be cold, which I have an entire rant about. We have 18 minute, minutes I am allowed to rant. So back when I was younger, like even until I was around 17, 18 years old, December was pretty chilly. So sometimes you'd wear a jacket, or even during September, you should start wearing jackets, you'd wear long sleeves, you'd wear sweaters, um, your socks get thicker and all of that. And it's not weird to wear, you know, sweater weather outfits. And somewhere around, yeah, towards the end of my teenage year, so 17, 18, 17, 18, it started getting a little warmer. So you could still wear sweaters, but um, maybe only if you have an aircon classroom or you could wear long sleeves, but you'd like to roll it up sometimes because it gets hot. Uh, you can wear a jacket, but you typically wear a, a sandal, I mean, you know, those short sleeves or sleeveless at, or even sleeveless under it because your clothes need to be, like, flexible with the weather because it gets hot. But at night or in the mornings, it's still super cold. So when you wake up at 6 a.m., when you take a bath, when you get out of the bathroom, it's, like, freezing. So it was still normal. But this year... Man, it's gotten so hot. So I was going to work uh, a couple of days before Christmas. I took a vacation leave like two or three days before Christmas, I think. 
So, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd wake up at 6, sometimes. Sometimes. I'd wake up at 6. Let's say I wake up at 6. Um, so, I'd wake up at 6, I'd take a bath, and it's still kind of like summer weather-ish. And I'd walk around without any need to, to rush to get dressed because it's still kind of warm. And then when I step out of the house, it's just like blazing heat, which is sad because when I was around six, seven, eight, nine, nine years old, I remember like having to wear really thick socks and pajamas and long sleeves, and even I, and because I am not, I don't do well with cold areas, I get cold really easily. I walk around the house with a blanket, or like draped all over from head to toe. And that was fun. That was nice because you'd sit in the in the living room without any need for a fan or aircon, and you'd go to sleep without turning on the fan because it's so so cold. So just the general temperature can sustain you through the night. But nowadays, nowadays you need aircon in December. It's January. I'm still using an aircon. What the hell? And who said global warming wasn't a thing? Fight me. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, that's that's certainly sad because I remember the times when it was so cold you don't really want to move too much and you'd sip hot chocolate while opening gifts on December 24th and that's, it was, I, w I wish things were still like that because like, that was nice. Cool weather was nice and I have so many jackets, I love jackets in general. And I always would love bringing them out during September to around mid-Feb. But now, I only use them for like, what, once a week, maybe? In December, I used them for like four days before I started getting hot again. So that is... That's a bummer for me. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> since I got off track, um... I still wanted to do a cozy feel though because in general everyone knows, knows that December is still pretty cool supposedly so I still wanted to do a comfy, cozy, warm piece. Let's say I wanted to draw a girl with sipping, I don't know, a hot beverage and I kept the color scheme to be pretty warm because I still wanted to keep that vibe. Well, actually, it, it tangent number two. <laughs> actually, it did get cooler for like a week here uh, during Christmas itself because it was storming, and that's actually weird because usually, or back in the old, my old, the olden days when you youngsters don't know or something, something like that. Um, back when I was younger, in general, it was like from March to around. July, August-ish, it was pretty hot because that's the summer season and not really actually I'd say from March to around June, July-ish it was hot because it's summer uh, from around mid-July to around September-ish it was the rainy season and then from October to around Feb it's usually pretty cold just like supposed to be the cool what they call the Amihan season, so that's when the cold air blows in. Where am I getting with this? Yeah, right. so that's that was the cycle before when I was younger, when I was around. Um, I think I think at the high school, um, it was that system. When I got to college, though, that started changing slowly. So it's kind of weird that it was storming in December. That's that's not usual here in Southeast Asia. Or it wasn't rather until a few years ago. Um, it was when I was high school. It was like super weird to hear a storm in November or December. But now that's super normal. Now I barely felt the rainy season at all. Even though I know that currently, um, actually, if you can actually, um, right now in where was that? I know there's, there's this super big storm that flooded. <laughs> no, I don't know where it flooded. I don't know my geography. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, there was this super big storm that hit the Philippines during December. 
I hope you'll be able to help out somewhat. So if you can donate, um, just search online what the recent news. I, I can search. I can search it up right now because my laptop cannot handle Premiere playing while doing anything else. Actually, it can't even handle Premiere sometimes. So I can't really put any put in any details right now. But if you are able to help or donate towards the victims of that big storm that just happened please do um they really need help since it it kind of wrecked that entire area yeah big floods landslides all of that so right anyway why did we get into that <laughs> without any prior research proper research ah <laughs> dang it i'm a mess i'm a mess i don't know what to do with 18 minutes so we did spend a lot of the time for this drawing on the flower since I wanted to put a lot of extra detail into that. And then I just sort of sped through the rest because it was pretty simple anyway. But the thing that I like seeing with December is that how different it is from November. I'm holding all of the cards in my hands right now. And I have December and January up. up and I can really see the difference in terms of what I was trying to accomplish and accepting how the medium works. So with January, I wanted an even coloring, what do you call that, an even layer. Because I was coming in from watercolor, which you can sort of do that with watercolor. So I was trying to achieve an even, not streaky tone with the colored pencils. So I spent, I think, an entire day just trying to finish the January fluoresces and it's a bit of a mess actually. There's not enough shadows, not, not enough definition. Um, the colors that I chose are too similar to each other to actually create proper shadows and all of that. The the race in the background is not a proper circle. It is certainly a mess. So comparing it to December, it's actually December is really decent actually. <laughs> I'm actually really, really, really happy with how December turned out. Um, even, even like the ambient lighting is really nice. Patting myself on the back. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think people should, you should, or you as an artist should try doing a monthly series at least, because it number one forces you to try to draw something every month. Even though I did fail this somewhat. With the flower series it still forced me to try and draw something because it would be bad or to be sad if i couldn't complete an entire set which is supposed to be supposed to be 12 pieces and number two it does actually force you to improve even if you're just drawing once a month you're still learning something new um you're still learning new techniques and how to handle the medium you start experimenting with colors with color palettes with with shading and lighting and I, I thought I was confident coming into this because I thought hey I am used to watercolor I already know color palettes and and shadows and all of that but looking at Gen Y right now that is a hot mess <laughs> so yeah I actually do um, encourage doing a monthly series at least or try to draw something at least once a month a series is pretty cool because you can see um, a theme and how how you change, how you interpret it throughout the entire, say, one year of doing it. And I don't know. It's really nice to look at. Like, if you're leafing through just all of the cards right now, it's really nice to look at even if the quality changes throughout the year. Um... I'm happy with this. I'm super happy, actually. I, I, I even managed to finish it, even though I'm a month late. Well, to be fair, I actually started the Flower series a month late. I started I started January in Feb, because that's when I caught up of it. So, I am kind of on track. <laughs> okay, so what you see on screen right now is actually my parents' Christmas gift to me. They bought me a 12 set of Copics. <laughs> screams, softly screams. I don't want to wake anyone up, but oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> I have Copic. <laughs> so I got so they got these from the art bar, which is a it's a physical shop here in the Philippines, but they also do online transactions. And they do carry Copics. Oh, <laughs> and it's so nice. Like it did bleed through the cardstock here in the back, in the back, but it's so nice. It layers so nicely. Wow. Okay, actually, okay, we'll talk. Copics are expensive, and if you want to get this started on alcohol markers, you can try, you know, the the off-brand ones in Lazada. If you just want to try them. Or if you want something with an actual brand or something that you feel that, that would be a lot more reliable than Chinese knockoffs from Lazada, um, you can try going to the National Bookstore and buying the Winsor & Newton Pro Markers, I think. I think it's the Pro Markers. Yeah, just, just cut the one with the brush tip, if that's what you prefer, actually. Um, those are cheaper. The only difference is that the Vincent and Newton line has a lot less colors and also it's not exactly refillable and they don't sell nibs to replace it when if ever you do destroy your nib. So that's what you're actually kind of paying for with the Copics. Number one, the packaging is beautiful. I am I'm a sucker for packaging. Especially packaging that can be reused and packaging that's super functional. I'm a sucker, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Um, number two, you're actually paying for the nib quality and also the replaceable, the replaceability of the nibs, and you're also paying for being able to refill your pen. But other than that, from what other YouTubers have been saying, I don't have any experience with other al alcohol markers. Um, from what other YouTubers say, alcohol markers more or less work the same. Except you're paying for number one, brand. Uh, number two, the functionality. Uh, number three would be the color selection. And maybe the saturation of the color itself. But in terms of how they work, from what I've heard, they all work similarly. I don't have any first experience, so I can't really say anything about that. Because with watercolor, <coughs> with watercolor, you actually see this, the difference sometimes. Um... Sometimes it's in the saturation of the color, how much pigment you need to get a certain vibrancy for a color. Uh, sometimes it's in how it spreads, sometimes it's, it's in the actual texture of the color itself. So you see the difference sometimes. Oh, I've talked a lot. Anyway, we're at the end of the video. Please stay tuned for the summary of the flora series which is the next video coming out i hope you enjoyed please like and or subscribe i am trying to post regularly again we'll see what happens and i'll see you around bye